Welcome to One on One on God 101. Our guest today is four time survivor castaway, <laughs> turned winner of the traders, turned Big Brother season 25 house guest, famous <laughs> Suri. Suri, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, Julie. Thank we you. have a lot. Thank you for being here. We have a lot to catch up on. But first, God, I ask all our guests the same first question, which is, did you grow up knowing God? Absolutely. God was a stable in our lives. We had to go to church on Sundays. We Not that we had to, we enjoyed going to church on Sundays. And I was actually baptized twice. I was baptized Catholic from my grandmother on my father's side and Pentecostal on my mother's side. Um, so God is always, if you noticed in the house a lot of times when things got rough, we turned to God in prayer because that's what we were taught to do. Now, were you a baby when you were baptized both times? No, I was a baby the first time and I was 12 years old the second time. And so that second time, were you a part of that decision? Absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, tell yeah. me about it. Why at 12 did you want to be baptized in the Pentecostal church? Because we were taught that in order for you to uh, be received in heaven. You had to be saved and sanctified with the Holy Spirit is what we call it in the Pentecostal, Pentecostal church. And um, because they wanted, I wanted to go through that process. I was a part of the church. I belonged to the church. I wanted to be saved and I wanted to be baptized and experience the whole thing and get closer to God. So that's why I did it. Amazing. And did you, after doing that at age 12, did you feel different? Did you Julie, operate differently? Now, I'm not perfect, still a work in progress. However, what I did recognize and I do recognize, and I tell people this, I told people in the house, I tell people, anybody that is willing to listen, I feel like I have been, uh, I feel like I have a covering over my life um, because of it. I feel like God has kept me in ways that I can't really explain. I don't, it's not because of me. And he's kept my life, kept me safe in instances where sometimes I didn't make the best decisions. And I think, and I've said, and I've explained to people and shared with people all, but for the grace of God, things could have turned out so differently for me in so many circumstances. I, I'm with you. I, I've been there. Um, now, we know you have Jared as one of your sons. How many right. children total do you have? Three and, boys. Okay, three boys. Yes. And you raised all of them going to church as well? Absolutely. But here's the funny thing, Julie. My, I never push my beliefs on my children, right? I want them to be strong, independent young men. I want them to, I'll guide them, but I want them to make their own decisions. And when we moved to Connecticut, uh, Jared and Jamil, who's my middle son, they make friends. They're kind of like their mom, like everybody loves them. <laughs> and so one day Jamil comes home and he says, Ma, I want to invite you. You know, I started going to this church and I want to invite you. I'm, I decided I want to get baptized. And I'm like, okay, you know, great. I'm, I know you've been going to church. I've seen you, you know. He decided to get baptized Mormon. Oh. He belonged to a Mormon church. Jared followed suit. Jared also invited me months later to his baptism. And this is all at their own doing. And am I a member of the Mormon church? No. However, I need them to know that you have to have faith and a religion and something, something greater than us. And if it's Mormon, if it's Pentecostal, if it's Catholic, and it's something that you believe in wholeheartedly, um, then I will support it. Definitely. Now, my oldest son is Pentecostal and we just got my granddaughter, Avani, her baptized right before I came on the show. Wow. Yeah. Aww. yeah. That is amazing. Okay. So talk to me about, um, your prayer life. How do you pray? When do you pray? So I typically, I don't pray enough, Julie. <laughs> All of us. <laughs> True. I typically pray at night and I always pray 
when I have questions or when there's decisions to be made in my life, or even if I'm going through some turmoil, it could be turmoil at work. It could be turmoil in the family. It could be turmoil in my marriage. Um, But even my husband and I, we pray together. Like if we think if we're going through something or we're arguing a lot, or we're just having those ebbs and flows that you have from a marriage of 18 years, we always turn to God. We always always say, honey, let's pray about it, because I feel like when I'm looking for answers that are beyond me and I can't figure something out and I want to make the best decision for my life. I think for me, going to God sometimes brings me to clarity that I can't get on my own. Did you well, what did your prayer life look like when you were on Survivor four times and in the Big Brother house and on Traders? On Traders in particular, there's this song, and I hate that I can't remember the lady's name who sings the song, but it's called You Know My Name. And I would listen to that song every morning before I left. As with Traders, we were allowed to sleep at a hotel. We didn't sleep in the castle. So when I left the hotel, before I left the hotel, every morning I had the benefit of being able to have something spiritual with me. I would listen to that song right before I left. And if we had music on Survivor on the Big Brother house, I probably would have done the same. <laughs> but with not having that, um, I just prayed. Like sometimes you would see Felicia and I pray. A lot of times I prayed to myself. I didn't really include anybody in my prayers, but it was a constant Lord, just please help me (laughs) to maintain, help me to get through this, help me to not, to to display the person that I wanted to display, to be the person that would make my family and God also proud of me. I think that song you're talking about might be by Tasha Cobbs. That's That's exactly it. That's her. Yes. Yes. That is Mm. a powerful song. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I came home and I played it for my mother. I played it for my grandmother, who's 101 years old, because that song speaks to my soul. Yeah. 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 You know, I recently heard a pastor say that we must be careful with the music we listen to because music will latch onto our soul Mm. and doesn't need permission. So when you're listening to music that is the opposite of godly. Right. You're letting it latch on. And and I've noticed it's true. You know, suddenly you'll hear one song and then you'll be humming it later and you don't even know yeah, why. Exactly. So yes, yes. So so you know my name by Tasha Cobbs is Ooh. a great song to latch on. I feel like I get goosebumps just thinking about the words of that song, the just the powerful message in that song really, really speaks to me. And I just want to share it with everybody. I shared it with everybody in my family. <laughs> now, one of um one of the things in scripture is is you know, we are disciples of Christ and we have to go and like tell all the nations about him, right? Spread the word essentially. But you did, I understand as a mother, you want your children to make their own choices. Have you ever uh, tried to preach the gospel to anyone, like anyone on Survivor or in Traders or in the house? Because I know you were very close with Izzy and I am going to be talking to her later. I know. She said, I'd love to talk to you. I'm an atheist. I said, okay, I love you. Let's talk. Why? (laughs) Um, you know what? I, I don't preach the gospel, but what I do is share my experiences and share uh, like some of the things I tell you where I know it was God's hand in, in those situations that made everything work out for me. Like I shared those stories with Izzy. I shared those stories with Felicia in the house, like especially during lockdown, like some of the things that I have experienced in my life but only for the grace of God could have been catastrophic. And that is my testimony. And that's where I get to kind of um, share the gospel, so to speak, on how I know God has moved in my life, how I have evidence that God is real and that he kept me. And I still feel like this. I say this to my husband and my family all the time. I feel like the reason God has kept me 
for all of these years is that he has a purpose for me. And I really don't, I'm still waiting. And I, when I pray to God, sometimes I'm like, God, I know that you kept me out of all of these situations that could have gone tragically left for a reason. And I'm here and willing, just tell me what it is. I'm still waiting because I still think it's yet to come. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You keep asking. Yeah. And, and when, when it's the right time, he'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you, when you won the traders, mm -hmm. did you give the glory to God? Absolutely. I do. Absolutely. <laughs> God, but for God, again, in my life, girl, I would be, I'm a hot mess already, Julie. <laughs> but <laughs> I would, could be, yeah, things would be so different, but for the grace of God and his hand on my life. My mother, if my mother was here, uh, she said, I was 12 years old. I had gotten some trouble in school or something. And we were there. My mother was there to see the principal. And she said, she, her story is she felt the circle. She says, she always says, you feel that circle around us. That's God's protection is around us. She said, ever since that day, I knew that God would always protect you. And I can't even disagree with her, Julie, because he has, he has. And when she tells me, whenever you have questions, whenever you feel weary, whenever, look, pray to God and remember that circle. I love that. Yeah. Okay, we have to talk about big brother stuff because we only okay. have less than four minutes left. <laughs> Good. You change your vote to vote for Matt to win when you heard Jag's final speech to the jury because he got a little dark with, you know, your blood is on my hands, like you're all there, I'm here, I did it, I willed it. I felt like he had your vote until that speech, but I could be wrong. So my vote for JAG changed because I was at the round table. I was JAG's advocate because I do feel like JAG played a great game. However, the last two weeks in the house, JAG's arrogance and in that speech, the speech was just a cherry on top. The mm -hmm. last two weeks in the house, I saw a change in JAG's behavior. It's almost like JAG had already resounded to the fact that he won the game and he was able to show his true arrogant side, I guess, is the way I want to put it. And then when he made that speech, that just pushed me over the edge. And I'm like, see, that's the arrogance that I was telling you guys that I started to see in Jack. And I did not like that. Like, yes, you could have played a great game, but some of the things that you did while you were in your arrogant mode, including that speech, mm -mm, you can't have my vote. And plus, I love Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Even though he, and okay. Yes. Um, have you talked to Jag since his win? I have not. I have not. Only person I really talked to was Izzy. Like I've really been decompressing and spending a lot of time with my husband and my family. I did get a text from Matt. I got a text from Red. Um, that's really it. I haven't really spoken to anyone else. Okay. Well, Jared, of course you'd have. Oh, well, Jared, yeah, I've seen Jared's been here. <laughs> I don't even count Jared. He's just snatched, you know, <laughs> that's automatic. <laughs> as, as we're recording this, uh, is he still with Blue? It's complicated. Okay. I don't know what, who, yeah. <laughs> Julie, okay. I'll let Jared I, answer that. <laughs> I'll let him answer too, because also I couldn't ask you about it in the house because you, well, Exactly. Well, they, they kept, <laughs> and I didn't really together, know that. You hmm? didn't know he told. You knew they were together in the house, but you didn't know he revealed to her that. Julie, absolutely. We had conference. So I, I'm going to I'm having a I'm going to start a podcast, and it's going to be called Mother Knows Best, or does she? And it's going to have Jared and I on it, and it's going to be the millennial versus the Gen X view on reality and just all things in the world. And we're going to discuss. We came in with a plan. You don't tell anybody. Anybody. You know. Julie. Youth. Youth. Exactly. Millennials. Millennial. <laughs> On that note, Sari, I want to say God bless you. Oh, God be to you. I'm you. so thankful for you. And um, this, this is not goodbye. This is until we speak next time. Until next time. Thank you so much. God bless you and your family as well. Happy holidays. And thanks for having me, Julie. And I'll see you soon next week. Yes. Sari Fields. Thank you. Thank you, Julie.